Hey there, welcome back to Short Text 331. Today we're going to talk about Green's functions of the Laplacian and their eigenfunction expansion. So it turns out that over the last few videos we talked a lot about eigenfunctions of the Laplacian operator and that actually gives us access to the Green's functions of that operator. So the Green's functions are defined by this equation. So the Laplacian applied to the Green's function is equal to the Dirac delta. And you see here two arguments, r and r prime. This, uh, the argument, or rather the variable, for this differential operator is, is r. And, and then we have here on the right also r minus r prime. And of course, we have to give this equation boundary conditions in order to solve it. And the last few videos, we actually used eigenfunctions of the Laplacian operator, so, so solutions to this equation with specific boundary conditions. And so one of the examples we saw was this uh, uh, cubic type geometry where the function in question had to vanish on the faces of the cube, you see a variable time here because what we were solving at the time was the uh, diffusion equation, which involves not only space but also time. And uh, it turns out in, in three dimensions, you can write the eigenfunctions of the Laplacian operator as a product of uh, three uh, eigenfunctions of the Laplacian operator in 1D, so the second derivative operator. And so you get a function of x, a function of y, and a function of z, three different indices, and one and two and three, which we can arrange into a vector like this. And each of those functions take uh, this form. So phi n of x is square root of two over L sine of n pi x over L. So that's that's each of these guys here. And the eigenvalue, the corresponding eigenvalue is lambda n1 plus lambda n2 plus lambda n3. And each of those lambdas take this form, minus n pi over L squared. So that's for the cubic geometry. On the other hand, we also looked at the spherical geometry, which gave, the, gave us uh, a, a lot more work to do. And we're interested in the interior of the sphere. That's not going to be always the case. Typically, if you want to find a Green's function, you want it on the inside, on the outside of the sphere. But here we're going to focus on the interior. And again, we wanted our function to vanish on the edges or on the, on the surface of that sphere. And so, so uh, at some radius or not. And, and in that case, uh, we had a, a more complicated solution of this form where we had a radial part and an angular part and the radial part and the angular part sort of talk to each other through this index L. Uh, we have then our phi n is r ln y ln the spherical harmonics that give us the angular part and then the radial part was given by these spherical Bessel functions evaluated at, the, uh, uh, at this argument, r over r naught, r naught is the radius of our sphere, and x ln is the nth non-vanishing root of j l of x. And this non-vanishing, of course, refers only to uh, the, the l greater than zero, where you may have a, a root that vanishes, and so everything vanishes, but that's not a solution we want. Finally, the eigenvalue is given by minus x ln over r zero squared, where again, this x ln is the nth non-zero root of j l. The indices take on values uh, n going from 1 to infinity, all integers, and then l starts at 0, and m goes between minus l and l. And these are then our, the eigenfunctions of our Laplacian operator with this geometry. So spherical, uh, a, a spherical uh, um, uh, surface where the function vanishes, and we're interested in the solution in the interior. Now, we saw in previous videos, uh, if you look back at the, the, uh, the one, actually, the one previous video on Green's functions, uh, it turns out that the, if you're given a, uh, a, a, a complete set of, of functions, which is what we have for our operator for our Laplacian, then you can write the Green's function in this way. So the Green's function is the sum over all the eigenfunctions uh, and, uh, with this index n evaluated in, in this following way. So phi n star of r prime, phi n of r, it's important to have the star here, the complex conjugate, and then all that divided by the eigenvalue lambda n. And, and this works because if you go ahead and apply the Laplacian here on the left uh, on the variable r, then it will hit this phi n of r, uh, as you see here. But this function is itself an eigenfunction of the Laplacian. And so the Laplacian applied to phi n is simply lambda n applied to phi n. The lambda n cancels, and you're left with this sum over n of phi n star of r prime phi n of r. Now, this object will typically give you a delta of r minus r prime. Uh, and which is a completeness relation. And I say typically because usually the operators one is interested in are going to be self-adjoint and they're going to have a complete set of uh, functions that uh, that characterize their uh, their spectral properties. And so so if that's true, then we indeed have a completeness relation that's uh, that's supported 
by these eigenfunctions, uh, in this case of the Laplacian. Now, uh, it, this is all completely general uh, in the sense that we're not, we're not making a specific uh, reference to any particular geometry. So for the cube, how do these work out? So the completeness relation applied to the cubic geometry turns out to factorize completely in this way, uh, pretty obviously. And, and, and this is expected because the delta of r minus r prime factorizes in delta of x minus x prime, delta of y minus y prime, and delta of z minus z prime. And that's exactly what we see here. Now, this was obvious from our construction, right? So in our construction, we have that phi itself factorizes into x, y, and z pieces. And so if you pair up the x with the x prime, the y with the y prime, and, and, the, uh, and the z with the z prime, then you will get indeed that you have square root of 2 over L, sum over n1, sine of n1 pi x over L, sine of n1 pi x prime over L, and then you get the same type of object, but with n2 and y and y prime, and the same type of object, but with n3 and, and z and z prime. And each of these is the delta, and so all is well, we get exactly what, what we're expecting and in a pretty obviously factorized way. Now, I'm saying here, by the way, that, that this completeness relation here uh, factorizes pretty obviously in the case of the Cartesian coordinates, but it does not factorize, what, what does not factorize is this, by the way, let's be careful about that. So this does not factorize into x, y, and z parts, because we're dividing here by this eigenvalue lambda n, and this involves x, y, and z contributions. Remember that lambda n in, in uh, Cartesian coordinates, it's the sum of lambda n1, lambda n2, lambda n3. So it's the sum of all these squares with the minus sign. And so that does not factorize. And so the Green's function in general would not factorize. What does factorize is after you take the Laplacian of it, and then and then you cancel, you get to cancel the lambda n. And so then, then the completeness relation does factorize. Um, that all is much less obvious in the spherical case where the completeness relation would take this form. And here, once again, our, our Green's function will have the uh, r's and y's over here and the r's and y's over here so the radial and the angular parts for each factor it would take this form divided by the eigenvalue once you apply the laplacian the eigenvalue cancels out and you're left with this and it's much less obvious that this gives you a delta but uh, if, if our eigenfunctions are complete then then it should give us a delta of r minus r prime and that if you want is one possible representation of the delta in terms of our uh, spherical harmonics and the radial parts of our functions. In, uh, in future videos, I expect that we will discuss more these um, uh, this, uh, boundary value problems and, and further problems in, of diffusion and the Schrodinger equation and, and other wave equations. And so we will see more about this type, this type of expressions and these types of objects. Now, what happens if we remove the boundaries? So in that case, uh, the cube and the sphere, all that should converge to the same uh, answer if, if, uh, if we send all the boundaries to infinity, say. And, uh, and also in that case, it's pretty simple to see that the eigenfunctions of the Laplacian take this form. So it's very easy to see that if you take two derivatives of this exponential with respect to x, down comes a, a, a kx. If we have this form e to the ik dotted with r, where k has uh, uh, three components, kx, ky, kz. Now, if you take two derivatives with respect to y, then you down comes a ky and then a kz if you take two derivatives with respect to z. And so what that tells us is that, that these are indeed eigenfunctions of the Laplacian with uh, um, uh, in, in all of space, basically, without any particular boundaries. And so we're going to call them phi sub k of r. So there, there are no boundaries, and so there's no quantization of any indices. So kx, ky, kz are, are continuous variables. Uh, so that's as far as the function phi. And the eigenvalue is, which we used to call lambda n, now is simply a lambda k with k continuous, which is just minus k squared. So this k squared, of course, contains kx squared plus ky squared plus kz squared minus sign in front, and that's that's basically the full set of eigenfunction, eigenvalue systems that uh, that we need for, for the problem without boundaries. Now, uh, again, we're armed now with the eigenfunctions of the, and the eigenvalues of the Laplacian in, in the absence of boundaries, so in all of space, that's how we say it. And with that, we can build a Green's function. So our g of r, r prime for the Laplacian in all of space will take this form. So instead of having a sum over the indices, now we have an integral. We have our function 5k of r, 5k star of r prime, and then we divide by lambda k, which again takes this form, kx squared plus ky squared plus kz squared with a minus sign, and, and so explicitly that it takes this form. So we have the 1 over 2 pi to the 3 halves, this is the normalization, and, uh, and you'll see why it's, it has to be that. Uh, so now it becomes 1 over 2 pi cubed 
integral uh, over all of uh, the case space, which is a three-dimensional case space, is one attached to each coordinate of our Cartesian coordinates x, y, and z. And so, and then we have our exponential, which I've combined as e to the i k dotted with r minus r prime. And then the whole thing gets divided by minus k vector squared. And, and this integral then is what one would have to do to find the Green's function of r minus r prime or r r prime in all of space, which as you can see, it's a function of r minus r prime. Now this, this integral should give you pause a little bit because uh, this volume, um, this volume factor here goes like k squared and and uh, and and, uh, and it has an angular part as well so this k squared will be cancelled and so so what's the fate of this integral uh, we'll have to we'll have to calculate it uh, and what does it do in in uh, in 1d what does it do in 2d what does it do in 3d so here i wrote it in 3d but you could you could consider it in arbitrary dimensions of course and so so this is something to to talk about and and we'll do that in uh, in upcoming videos now uh, if you take this at face value and you go ahead and take the Laplacian of this expression, then you have a one over two by cubed, it goes of course uh, uh, unharmed, and then the, the Laplacian goes right through and hits our, a, um, our R dependent factor here, because this is Laplacian with respect to R, and then down comes a, a minus k squared, which cancels this minus k squared, that's of course exactly as expected, and we're left with this integral. And definitely this integral should give you pause, this is a bit of a weird integral. We're integrating over all the space, something that has a sine and a cosine of this combination. It just oscillates. So what does this do? Well, uh, if r is equal to r prime, then in fact, this is just one and we're integrating over all space just one. So that blows up. And if r is different from r prime, we're integrating something that goes up and down and up and down, just as much up and down. And so uh, you will see, you would see that all, the, all, the, uh, all those positive and negative contributions cancel each other out. And that's exactly what happens. And so that turns out, that this integral behaves exactly like the delta, the, the direct delta of r minus r prime. Now I haven't proven to you that this is really true. This is simply what uh, uh, I'm motivating here. This is simply what you would obtain or you would expect to obtain from the gener this generalization to a continuous, uh, a continuous index, and and taking the the results from solving our uh, for the eigenfunctions of the Laplacian in all of space. We will talk more about that. In, in future lectures, and for that we need to talk about Fourier transforms. So this then is, is sort of a way to uh, close up uh, uh, the discussion of Fourier series, discrete Fourier series. We saw the uh, sine and cosine form, the trigonometric form. We saw the, uh, the exponential form, and uh, we saw the discrete Fourier transform as well in previous videos, more on the side of linear algebra as a, as a special unitary transformation and now we're building up towards Fourier transforms. These are very important objects. They're very important operations. Uh, we will uh, be, we will find them absolutely essential for a discussion of any type of quantum field theory, where where one typically considers all of space and no, no boundaries. And so this is uh, this is a central object that we'll be uh, tackling in in future videos. I hope you enjoyed this uh, this video today. If you did, please like and subscribe. And as always, if you're looking for a tutorial in physics or math in English or in Spanish, you can contact me at shorttext331 at gmail.com or you can leave a message in the comment section below and I will get back to you. And I'll see you next time.